Don't miss our unboxing and build plus card review of the new Far Striders. Spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear, and today we're unboxing and building the new Far Striders for Warhammer Underworld Shadespire and taking a look at the universal upgrade cards as well as the character cards uh, for these guys right here. So, this is a brand new expansion this week for Shadespire. The accompanying sleeves actually were delayed a week. I guess there was somewhere along the way. No big deal. They will be out next week and of course there is no separate dice for them because we already have blue dice <laughs> from the initial release so no big deal there either so it's a little light week but that's okay we we love these new shades but i know my last review here on the channel I hadn't really gotten into the game yet <laughs> well that has changed quite a bit because i have uh, <laughs> I've played a lot of games of Shadespire, and with the new FAQ coming out, I think uh, I think it did the game actually a lot of clarifications came through. So each one of these sets is going to come with two decks of 60 cards at the bottom, and intermixed into these are not only the character cards, which we're going to go over, but also the uh, universal cards as well, power cards, and also some objectives. Power cards mean upgrades and also ploys and got the models themselves now just like their larger stormcast cousins these guys uh come in a box set of three and have some interesting mechanics as well so let's take a look at their instructions right here just to kind of get a feel for how they're going to go together now these guys are all the, the multi-slice kind of easy to build Hits. Uh, they say no glue required. They, they, I'm sure they are very snug to put together as well. But if you want to get these guys painted up and on the tabletop and hobby, you're probably going to want to glue them down. Now, what uh, at first glance here, it looks like they're separate. The bases are separate themselves. So I'm liking that right off the bat because then you can paint the bases separate. I personally don't like painting the little leaves and stuff that come on these. I would much rather put a little texture on here myself and put real actual leaf walk onto here which you can actually buy from for weapon miniatures has a bunch of it green stuff world uh, green stuff industries rather but there's a little leaf flock that you can buy you can also buy the punches if you want to just uh, punch them out of uh, construction paper or coffee filters whatever so i like that i prefer to do that myself but there's no getting around these logs and stuff which i kind of like so that's cool and it looks like everything just kind of goes together. These guys are going to be very three-dimensional. Now, in the past, the mold lines have been very well hidden. And just glancing at this, it looks like there's going to be some exposed gaps here in the shoulder pads. This one looks to be probably pretty well hidden because of the detail on the shoulder pad. And then over here, it looks like you're going to have the symbol kind of obscuring things, but a flat shoulder pad right here. So we're going to have to take a closer look at that one, probably just use a lot of the super thin glue in order to get that to look right. Now let's take a look at the sprues before we get them all together and move on to taking a look at the cards. So wow, really well detailed. Take a look at that. The models themselves there are, I mean, look at the fur pattern, look at all the texture, <laughs> the, the growth marks on the tree. That's just ridiculous. Like all of the little Kind of knurling I don't want to say knurling but designs in uh, this crossbow pistol I forget what these things are called I mean the fur looks fantastic the bark habards here all the detail work right there it's just really really uh, good looking stuff here and then back inside of here the bird looks great Oh wow, look at those feathers. I mean, they're a little kind of chunky, but not too bad. And the fur. Hair's looking good. Some lines on the bark here. Lots more detail on the front armor pattern. Man, these uh these are very well detailed. I can't get I can't wait to throw these together real quick and give you guys my breakdown and gotchas on those too. Okay, here we are. So they went together pretty good, but as we kind of guessed there, it looks like there is a little bit of a gap. So we used the super thin Tamaya 
uh, plastic cement here, Tamiya, potato, potato, however you say it, forgive my French. <laughs> I'm from the South, we talk funny. But it's got that great little applicator that's part of the brush itself, so it can get in there and get in between the gaps and everything, and it's not too bad priced. I mean, $5.50, give or take on that. So can't, can't complain at all, really. Uh, they do come right off the base, so I thought that was pretty neat. So you can paint up the base like I was saying. Again, I'm probably going to put a little texture over those leaves once I get around the paint on myself. But that's neither here nor there. Oh, let's see. I missed a piece of flash right there. No big deal. We'll get that in post. So you're going to want to put a little bit of extra glue there to fill in that gap. But other than that, everything goes, goes together pretty well. There's a couple of slices. And it almost looks like the plastic discolors itself as you cut deeper into it. So these little burrs and stuff. Uh, kind of discolor it. I don't know what that's about, but it doesn't really take anything away. And up here, I was just kind of waiting on this to dry. It looks like it still might be a little wet, and I'm just going to scrape that away, and hopefully it's flush, just like that area right there. And uh, easy game, easy life on the edits there. And here's the next guy, the more dynamic of the pose. Again, went together really well. The seam line's pretty hidden over here, and everything's pretty well hidden in the interior and underneath the cape. But once you get back to here, you almost have the same problem. So watch these big flat areas. Make sure to use that. You can put a little bit extra of that glue in there and kind of squeeze it out and dab it off. But pretty much you're going to have to wait for a lot of that to dry and scrape it out. Now this guy went together a little, uh, it was a little frustrating because there's this little notch here that you have to lock in with the bird to get uh, the feet lined up correctly right here. And this notch actually has a burr on it. So if you forget the burr on the notch or don't get it just right, this isn't going to squeeze together. And you might have an issue there. So make sure you don't forget that one. But other than that, all the gaps and everything go together pretty well. Everything's pretty well hidden as far as everything else. And if you use a liberal amount of, I was concerned when I saw this, if you use a liberal amount of that glue as well, it'll get into that long seam that's going to cover the majority of this tree right here. So a little bit of scraping to do right there, but I think oh, overall uh, this will be just fine. And this guy locks. So you, I like it so far because you can paint these guys off of the bases. And as we previously mentioned, there are 120 cards in here in the deck, two decks of 60. Now we have uh, some Stormcast or Far Strider specific cars that we're not going to go over because you're going to pick up this expansion. You're going to pick those up. Easy game, easy life. Uh, and you've probably seen the character cards because these were previewed on Warhammer Community. They all have a bolt pistol that shoots range three when you flip. There's a couple, I think one has a range four one. It does one damage. However, whenever this fighter ends an action phase in enemy territory, remember that's not counting the middle strip. That's no man's land. It's going to flip and they're going to become inspired and have the traditional two armor saves that the normal Stormcast have that we've already seen. Now, this guy isn't quite as good. He's uh, hitting on swords. These guys are hitting on hammers for two damage. So they're not those one shotters that we saw with the Stormcast, the guys with the hammers and boards um, that could just basically charge and take out anything. These guys, you're going to have to be a little bit more tactful with them because they're only spitting out two damage with the R. Once they become inspired, they do three. And there are some upgrades in here that I guess you could combo in uh, to do a little bit more damage, but we're not going to really talk about those in the uh, non-universal type terms. As far as the objectives go, we've got Unstoppable. This one's pretty cool because and it pairs up with another one you're about to see. Uh, whenever you make a successful attack against an enemy fighter on guard, you're going to get a glory. Boop, 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 boop. Complete victory is very interesting. Score this in the third action phase if none of your fighters are out of action. Very easy to do with the Sepulchre Guard or perhaps Skaven. Skirting danger if you end a phase without surviving fighters at least two on edge hexes. That would be an easy draw. Pick that up. Discard an objective you can't score. Get that one. Score it for one. Seems good. Only our only way out, very similar to supremacy. Score this in an end phase if you hold three or more objectives. Three or more, hmm. uh, that would be kind of crazy, right? <laughs> Heroes all score this in an end phase if all of your surviving fighters are inspired. Probably easy to do for most folks. Uh, a good 
cantrip card if you just need to try to spend an activation to draw an objective and discard an objective that might be a good one to hit late game score this in an M phase if there are at least three enemy fighters adjacent to the same friendly fighter that would be easy to do if you bring a rat back or a uh, a ghost back and kind of run them over there. Defensive strike. Score this immediately if your warband takes an enemy fighter standing in your territory out of action. Dun dun dun. It kind of goes along with unstoppable. Concerted attack. Score this immediately if three or more friendly fighters make an attack action against the same enemy fighter this phase. So Skaven, uh, Garuk's warband might be able to do that pretty well. Change of tactics. Score this immediately if a friendly fighter on guard makes a charge action. You can see the Storm Stormcast probably doing that. Balance of power, score this immediately when making an attack action if both the attacker and the target have two supporting fighters. So if you're squared up, that might be a good one. Not sure where we're going to see a lot of play with that one. Score this immediately, advancing strike when your warband takes out an enemy fighter standing in enemy territory out of actions. So um, lots of varied objectives there that could all definitely see their uses in certain factions uh, decks out there for sure. So there's your generic ones out of the Far Strider. And then we've got our ploys. So we got Twist and Knife, which I personally like. This uh, this has a tendency to catch some people off guard and do take a three attack up to a four attack and knock out most things. Play this during Friendly Fighters attack action that has a range of one and will succeed. It has plus one damage for that attack action. So it might not work with Skrick because his is uh, two range two but it could work with a lot of other things out there improvisation discard all power cards in your hand and draw three power cards so if you only have i don't know one i assume it goes off if you have zero i guess technically you discard you might have to check the faq on that if zero count as as having a hand do you have a hand of zero like in magic i don't know i don't remember that being in the current fact but i will double check that or you can definitely comment below uh, ephemeral, eph ephemeral shield. Say that ten times fast. The first friendly fighter to be targeted by attack action and next activation has plus one defense. So great survivability card. Inspiration strikes. Use a friendly fighter, they become inspired. Uh, not so good with the rats, but probably good with a lot of other people out there. Quick thinker. Oh, I like this one. Reaction. Play this after an enemy fighter's move action. Make a move action with a friendly fighter. Fighter who has not already made a move action in the day. So theoretically, and I think they address this specific, maybe not this specific card in the FAQ, but a charge consists of a move action and attack action. So if you charge, technically it can no longer be activated unless they specifically say you can do a specific action, not an activation, or not blank uh, blanket activations that aren't specifically or blanket actions that are named. However, in this particular instance, I believe if you are charged, you can still do this because charge is a attack. Somebody fact check me there, but I feel pretty confident in that interpretation of the card. So you get charged, you step back. If they don't have a range two attack, well, hey, probably just dodged a bullet. Spectral Wings, this is another good one that's going to catch a lot of people. The first fighter to make a move action and next activation has plus two. So obviously you're going to play that on your enemy's power step. And then, boom, you've got bonus speed, maybe to be able to charge up and one-shot something, uh, catch their general slipping, something like that. Another one that'll probably see a fair amount of play, Shard Gale, all fighters suffer one damage. I know <laughs> I can see a lot of Orc players playing with that right off the bat. Lethal Strike, the first attack action, if the first attack action and the next activation is a crit, double its damage characteristic for that attack action. And there's actually a upgrade in the Mogors uh, band, the new one that's going to be in a separate video, that specifically all its attacks are crits. So, that being said, if you know you have a crit on deck, all you got to do is hit, I suppose, this might be a good one to play on the power step before. Frozen in Time, interesting ploy. Choose an enemy fighter, roll a defense dice on a shield or a crit. That fighter cannot make any actions or be damaged in this phase so you basically lock them down which is kind of cool uh, i guess a shield or a crit gives you two of those and one crit so you got a 50 50 chance there great concussion another one we saw on 
uh, live on Warhammer stream. Choose a hex, push all fighters one hex. Uh, whichever order you choose, this push must move them away from the chosen hex. If there's no hex you can push a fighter into, do not push them. So, kind of like Earthquake, but more centralized. A destiny to meet if this fighter is not out of action at the third action phase. Gain one additional glory. That's a, ooh, we're on upgrades. Hold on. <laughs> Reset the board. And here we go. So that one's pretty cool. I could see that actually come into play for a lot of people, but watch out for those wings. Concealed Weapon, another one that's probably going to see play. Uh, really seeing a lot of good upgrades in this set here, because remember, you got to have that delicate balance. You can't have more ploys, more than half ploys, and you do upgrades. But it always seems like it's never, you got some upgrades in there that you kind of just like, hmm, I guess. But now, already two right off the bat here. They're solid. Regeneration at the beginning of the action phase, move up to remove up to one move token from the fighter. Again, great one right there. Why not? If you need survivability, shade glass spear. If this attack action is successful, discard this upgrade. I don't like any of those shade spire shade glasses that uh, make you remove them for they just seem to give you range, but then when they succeed, they go away. Not all of them do that. Darts and stuff don't. But I, d I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing here. Uh, another piece of the Shade Spire Exodia out of fans and boots. Of course, you've probably already seen this already. It does the same thing as the other ones. Hallowed Key. We've got the two keys in the set here. So I think our keys, that is complete, I want to say now. Uh, this one's going to score two glory if the fighter is on objective one. Superior agility during an attack that could drive this fighter back, whether or not your opponent chooses to. You can instead push them one hex. Opportunist reaction after a failed attack action that targets this fighter. You can push them one hex. Very cool. So, hey, do you really want to come in and take the chance that I'm going to push you away? And you're going to have to waste more activations to deal with me? Probably not. Zealous Defender. This, defi this fighter is considered to have additional supporting fighters while they are holding an objective. So kind of like a Whispers, but only if you're holding an objective. Incredible Strength, plus one damage to all attack actions with range one or two. See that going in a lot of decks right off the bat. And then my rats are getting that for sure. Gotta get that plus damage. Gotta, gotta, gotta get that plus damage. Get them, get them rats up to one-shot stuff. Can't have no speed bumps when it comes to the rats. So those are... Wow, that's it. I think we got through it. So those are our universal upgrades. Of course, there is a lot more right here that we're not going to get into. Because if you're picking up the set, you're already going to pick these up for the Far Striders and figure all that out. And if you're just here to check out the Universal cards, well, <laughs> you're not going to need to know any of those right off the bat until you bump up against somebody right there playing these guys. So I guess that's it. I guess we're done. <laughs> uh, that was our very first complete thorough breakdown of um, of the Shade Spire. So we're in it. We're in it now. Hopefully we made sense. Uh, leave any comments. You know, if, if we misspoke, we're still... You know, getting the rules down ourselves as sure uh, a lot of people out there are but hopefully a lot more types of these videos will be available uh, here in the near future from us so if you like this sort of chase bar tactics breakdown unbox and build on all the new sets and maybe we'll we'll go over some decks we built and uh, how to store your shade spire uh, miniatures as well and all the boards and everything all together i found a great new product that uh that holds them quite well uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all these videos. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.